Okay, I finally got this all sorted out. It was strange. I had, as I mentioned in the last video that you probably didn't watch, I had this memory leak uh, running my test program, which is using this is really uh, using this is testing two different two different um, libraries. Uh, this is a this is a this was a lost or a uh, wild goose chase. I have a thing called, that I just made up called abstract algebra. Okay, uh, and somehow or other, <coughs> I had got that mixed up because I'd copied it from my real math thing here as a marshaller. Right, and uh, some other stuff. I copied that project because inside there I invented something called uh, Classy Real. Um, but the Classy Real thing is something that I want to use, in fact. Uh, you know, that would be something that, uh, well. It's everything but abstract. But that's the concrete case where I'm actually uh, using the objects um, as they are represented in a similar fashion as you know, real numbers. So I wanted to make a this live here, which is something that I would link with. So th this this thing actually spits out a lib file in the output directory, it should outdoor, okay. Uh, real math test, abstract algebra lib, okay. I got all my idle case back. <laughs> you know what it does? It's uh, maybe I didn't do it right, but when I after getting rid of these incremental link files, every on any change of anything, it would rebuild every every single project, every file, every project. Even if it was totally unrelated. I make a chess test. Uh, change in new test or no changes and it would rebuild everything so that thing has to be on or else uh, there has to be another way to tell it to do like make file you know only build things with change sorry not like make file like n make n make is a utility program that one uses for compiling a command line and uh, it has the feature that it won't compile things that don't need to be compiled. In any event, <coughs> this here abstract algebra uh, hides the complexity of the um, her, you know the, the the interface device object. In this case, real math, and that uh, gives me. Um, the ability to use objects called reals and that I can use like plus and minus and divide and so on uh, in, a, in a natural way. I don't, I don't, uh, have to, I don't use any arrows. Everything's with dots, and um, and the mistake, of course, that I had was that uh, this thing was trying to initialize itself too, too early. And the memory leak was simply that I'd, for I'd forgotten to add this release at the end. So this is like your co-initialize and co-uninitialize. I have to put that. Now, can I do that? I think I can. I wonder. And it, and then it. B 
because uh, in terms of the order of uh, initialization of these things that are at global scope, Um, this would this uh, the sequence that, that is followed that causes these things to get executed uh, happens after all of the DLLs have been loaded. So, in particular, common DLL will have been loaded, and so therefore I can be sure that this initialization will occur after common DLL is loaded and in particular after um, this uh, wherever it is the init common here init common controls it's called this is the new way I didn't mention last time <clears throat> you don't call init common controls anymore uh, instead you call the one EX version, that's the new way, uh, and that allows you to pick and choose uh, which common, which of the common controls you want um, to allocate resources for and which you don't. That, that's actually a good, that's an improvement over what used to be there, in which case init common controls, would, you know, uh, Set up things for handling the internet and networking and God knows what else. Everything possible. But really, uh, <coughs> standard classes, I listed them here. Standard common classes are button, edit, static, list box, combo, and scroll bar are, you know, just for regular dialog things uh, and then the, this win95 classes has a few extras um, list view which is something I use progress bar I use status bar I use I don't use these things tree view I use and up nouns I use so I use a lot of these things I don't use the animation control I have my own uh, so, so that that should all be fine. <clears throat> and this function will have been called before this. And now let's see if we can prove. Well, we can easily prove that by putting a breakpoint here and here. The reason being that now that there are two separate modules and the, and the modules are loaded into memory at different times, uh, things at global scope in one module uh, will be initialized either before or after things at global scope and not at global scope in uh, another module. So. In, in this case, I think that this should work fine. Even if I get rid of the thing in the registry, wherever it is, it's here. I can get rid of it, but first let's try the co it. Do I have something called Cohen? I'm allowed to put an underscore. It's the new way. Okay, it's just a common, common name use. Who, else, who wouldn't call someone Cohen? 
it's like it might even be a number to find. If it wasn't a number to find, I could scope it. In any event, uh, F5. One line first. Here. See? So, even though that thing is declared at global scope, this here function um, has been is being called. Um, you know, it's not a it's not a global variable. You know, it's not a global scope, and that's occurring before stuff that I declared at global scope. That's the the main. Actually, I think I would call that the main advantage. To using DLLs over static libraries is this ability to get in before the, before this stuff. Oh, and by the way, I can't. You can't. <laughs> I, I thought I could make these static libraries, but I can't do that. <clears throat> and the reason is for, the reason I can't do that is for the same reason I wanted these to be DLLs in the first place. Uh, you know, so I didn't have to load up 20 versions of the runtime library. If I make these static libraries, right, true, common can use the functions and uh, have a copy of these libraries inside common. But then also yeah, my program, whatever it might be, would get a second copy of all of these lists, right? So I have two copies of TS string lib, right? And they're all using the same, all of them using the same um, runtime library. So that that would just be a big disaster. And so can't do it that way. Anyway, this is good. It's all going to work fine. Here we are. Now, how come I didn't? Uh, I'm getting clean or something. Clean. Maybe I was wrong. This is what you would want. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't. Created one. That's the problem. You gotta at least make an instance of one of those things. At global scope. I could also declare it, you know, here, here, in main, right? But that's the thing I'm trying to avoid. I would like um, to. Come on, that's good. Good. Perfect. No memory leaks, everything got initialized, uninitialized. Automatically, uh, automatically, uh, by just declaring this variable, this now becomes a macro. I guess I'll, it should be a template, really. Uh, okay. in <laughs> Type. Global in it. Global. Uh, in it, on in it. Global, in it, on in it. Something like that. It, this looks like a macro. Could be a macro, but it's a, as a template, it's better for a number of reasons. Uh, I like uh, 
Well, it doesn't matter, does it? Definition. So all I gotta do is write this down. <clears throat> I might put this say uh, TS device or oh, init I mean, it device or something. This can be any name, you know. And this, I just stand, standardized. I'll make this stand. Um, initialize root. Right no, no, it's not an instance. It's just create. Just create. Create right now. I need that to any time. Destroy and one one easy way to think to think up of a, a name that uh, is um, unique is this. Just make it look like garbage so that people look at it. They, they won't, um, they'll know it's none of their business. And, uh, Auto scope. Automatically scope. If you put it at global scope, then it's automatically available for the duration of global scope at a um, a lesser scope. It's available for the duration of a lesser scope. Auto scope device. And then my class is to support that. There's two functions. See how, how I cleverly used the go to feature first so I could change the target and then go back. And, and that's a trick that I learned many years ago. One thing I forgot, or I, in the process of my fumbling around, I ended up removing this DLL name. Which every DLL has to have one <clears throat> and return true. If you don't return true, then that 
indicates that your DLL failed to load and it won't be it won't be loaded into the memory. So it might be loaded in there temporarily. Okay. So the, the two functions I'm supporting is my macro. Oh, not device. Because the device is being... It, it could be anything. The device is anything. Something with green object. Object type. Let object live. <laughs> Lifetime. Give life. Um, but be born in. Be born into. Create. And die. Uh, uh, what's the thing that one says just before bringing something into being? Um, uh, let it be. Let it be. So or something. Live and die. So here, let me do that. And therefore, I will have real. <coughs> I will have the uh, the access to uh, the full functionality of this type of object um, for the entire duration of my program. If I put it uh, here, that's that would also be true. But I wouldn't have. Yeah, it would also be true if I put it here. No. I wouldn't be able to use it in a, let's say, another object declared at global scope, but uh, after this one. They get constructed in uh, the order of declaration. There we go. Now, first, let's see if this works. Does it look correct? It certainly does look about right. This would be a very small negative number, and so that's true. This again, there here is the negative number, so that's actually this minus this looks correct, and that's definitely correct. The usage of this thing is certainly not what you would call a rocket science. I take this. I take this, and then I just use these things like numbers. Uh, now the burning question is, what if I delete this? Will, will the thing come up and ask me properly? It should. Okay. And the math object is called that. Will it work? And everything's fine. Now, how does all of this work? How much time have I wasted? 24 minutes. But this is quite interesting. I think you'll find what I've done. After re removing all of the stupidities. Uh, I got everything back in shape and where everything is supposed to be. My real math is a com object you know, or device. I call it device, but it's a com object essentially. It, um, in analogy with a real com object, there it is here. 
Uh, there's something called threading model. And there's, there's something else called uh, an apartment model. Okay, apartment. Now, I don't know for certain what this means, but I think that this uh, actually means um, that uh, that it uses marshalling. Uh, that is, oh no, maybe not, maybe not. Here's what I think an apartment is. I'd love to look it up, but it's more fun to guess and then see if you're right later on. You remember my, um, look at the size of this thing. Do you remember my, uh, investigations into RPC? I know it was, ex it was extremely exciting. And one of the exciting things that I learned was that so in RPC land, let's see now, text, big text. Any color green, red, how about that? It's not big enough though. Alright. In RPC land, you have um, process may want to remotely execute a function uh, either on another machine or within another address space or something. And uh, I'm going to represent the process by a black box. So this here Normal sizes. This would be one process, and here might be another process. And uh, there can be one or more, but let's suppose that. Um, the function calls that these processes would like to call uh, fall under the same category. It might be, uh, <clears throat> maybe it's something to do with uh, sockets or something, you know, wind sock. And then maybe there's some process on the same machine, but it's acting like a server. And uh, so those things they are pro they might be processes they are processes or part parts of a process but typically we we'll call them not servers. So uh, and this would be the RPC server. It's a uh, it's an RPC server. This one, maybe it serves um, the procedures that it uh, serves are those to do with um, when, when sockets or something, you know. Now, what I think this apartment model is, is a, it's a mar marshalling, uh, marshaled calls. It's just like what we saw, I think. This here, let's suppose process one, um, 
uh, it wants to make a call. So it's trying to go in here and call some, uh, allow some function in, in here to be called. Functions will be represented as a surface color. I'll call this, uh, I'll give the functions letters. Um, an operation of some sort. So, uh, well, letter, okay. A. So here's function A, and there might be a whole slew of functions that are available for, from this server, each having a different letter. I'm moving. Okay. Uh -oh. I won't uh, waste too much more time with this typing. A, B. Alright. Okay, uh, so process one is uh, interested in uh, using function A. Process 2, uh, let's say, also is interested in using that same function. Gah. Well, actually, different color is a good idea. Alright. Both blind for function A. Um, and <clears throat> uh, we could have many more processes and each trying to use various functions. And what this server does is, um, it, what it wants to do is to <clears throat> put each, each client in, into what it calls an apartment. That is, they, they are separated internally in the server. They're, they're indicated as different units of execution and the natural mechanism to do that is different threads. So uh, this function A might be <coughs> being used by both of these processes concurrently and so we might have some black and some uh, blue inside here. Yeah. Let's see. There's some blue code being executed and some black code that is black blue. Right. right. Now if, if a process one would like to call function A uh, again, right? Uh, so this is its first call, and its next call is going to be the same function. Maybe it's sending many packets. Then those calls would be marshaled in here, and would happen in the order in which they were called by process 1. If process 2 were doing the same thing, also sending a bunch of packets, let's say, it too, within its own thread in here, would have its calls marshaled uh, so that they happen one after the other. Now, uh, there's no requirement in this in this scenario that uh, that the blues and the blacks be marshaled, right? Only that the blacks happen in order and the blues happen in order. And you could certainly have uh, a, you know, a blue and another black. Oh, here. 
here, right? They could be intermixed, but in terms of within their own apartment, right? They're they are in the same order with which they were called. Uh, now, if this process two or process one uh, also wanted to call uh, this function b, uh, since it has a thread dedicated only one thread dedicated per process, uh, it's called. Uh, it's called it's called to be will occur after the these calls occur on the server end because there's only one thread for this process uh, and similarly for process two so that to me sounds like a good re a good meaning to give to the word apartment. Apartment meaning um, the the uh, the processes the processes uh, represented as threads in a marshaled way on a server um, are separated. You know they, they have their own um, They, they live independently of each other in their own in their own apartment, even though they might be executing the same code at the same time. They, these blues and blacks have nothing to do with one another. There's no intercommunication between these things. They're uh, compartmentalized or put into an apartment, and by having many threads. Uh, that allows the server to be efficient in the way the, its resources are used. Uh, if process one happens to be blocked on this line, right? That, that's not going to affect process two because it's, it's in a totally different thread and it can walk right over this blocked uh, thread with no problems. That's what I think uh, apartment thing, apartment means. And so the threading model for this server, whatever it is, in JCAP-V, which sounds like a printer type thing, but who knows, uh, is apartment uh, and uh, now there must be another type because sometimes you see it say boom. I don't know what the other type is called. Apartment threading model on here. Some of them say both. I haven't seen one, one that, says, that just says something other than apartment or both. So I don't know what the first one is. The first, wow, I wonder what that is. Mert folder. Hmm, I wonder if that has to do with drop, like drop box. Uh, apartment. Now these are all actually in proc servers, not not the picture that I just showed you. So even within your one process, the server, which resides in its own DLL, but which is like a separate process, uh, puts the somehow has an I has a passed out tokens of some sort, uh, those would be pointers, you know, like a com pointer to its clients, and those tokens serve as uh, indicators for which thread belongs with which function call, right? So in, the, in this case with my marshaller, there's only one marshalling thread, but you could easily extend that. Here's the um, this right here. You know, these are the operations. The, the actual marshaller is here. All one would do is declare more than one of these, right? If somebody comes in, 
calls this function create a Marshall, Marshall map. <clears throat> well, what you do is that uh, you just um, do exactly nothing, nothing different than what than what's already here. This isn't an apartment, <laughs> actually. Because if somebody calls this again, I'll create a new Marshall map, right? And that person has a pointer, a token, to that Marshall map, which uh, indirectly points to a thread procedure that is associated with that particular object. So there would be two threads running, each serving uh, two different clients, uh, and executing their calls in sequence in the same order that they were issued, right? Uh, for each client, uh, but definitely not uh, overall. The two separate threads can execute in, in any order, random order, you know, that the calls come up. We don't know what the order of execution of each individual uh, request is, but we know that for a given client, its calls will be ordered, will be executed in the precise order that they were issued. Um, unless that is, unless you don't know what the order they were issued in is, right? If I had two threads calling this, uh, calling into the marshaller, um, imagine the clients are two different. One client, let's say, owns one of these tokens. Imagine that. Imagine that um, in my unit test program I well, I can't do it with this but I had two math objects or sorry I had one math object and let's say 20 different threads and uh, all of them are, call are making calls to these various functions which are being marshaled into a single thread and executed in some order Uh, since there's only a single thread for each token, then for each of the of those client threads, their calls will be executed in the order that they were issued in within each of the client threads. Do you see what I'm saying? Because this thing can't be queued more than one message at a time, right? Uh, there's no possibility to have a message get dequeued and then somebody jump in and dequeue another one and invoke a call uh, while that's going on. It's got to wait till it goes around again. It might now pick up a message that was initially from another client thread and execute that. But uh, the way that the things are put, put onto the uh, onto the queue, right, which is a type of linked list, in fact it's just a linked list, um, is a mutually exclusive, thread exclusive uh, method of pushing things onto a stack, and so therefore the order of things in the queue, though maybe not the order uh, that they were requested to be put on the queue will be in the same order as they were requested to be put on that queue for each client thread of the same object, but not for the you know overall. So in both directions, everything's interacting in a in a single linear way. Separate, in, uh, separated from their neighbors, uh, and that to me sounds like 
what an apartment is, right? An apartment, the word, the meaning of the word apartment is, uh, derives from the word apart, you know, separated. Anyway, I'm rambling, but I think that's mean what that means. And the way this thing works, it's quite simple. First, uh, create a single global math object from the DLL, whose implementation is an unknown, whose types of objects is an unknown. You know. uh, but anyway, I create one here. This is the call that creates the one and only pointer to a real math object that will exist um, for a given client. That get real here. Simply uh, on the on the basis of a registry setting creates either a marshaled or a non-marshaled real math object. Um, and henceforward simply uses it. Every new object when it comes into being calls this init instance function which copies the global pointer into its own uh, into itself all that does is bump up a reference count on the math object so if I have 10 uh, numbers I think the reference count here will be 11 because there's one for the global the one that's holding on to the whole thing so it doesn't die. Um, this here created the global create that we just renamed. Uh, things like um, assignment work this way. Uh, I'm just taking the value right uh, from this and uh, actually this is this, this this doesn't even need to be written down the default assignment operator will work uh, since every member in a real object thing uh, is assignable you don't have to, have to make this function uh, minus equals, I don't, what, so the last thing I want to do is actually use these operators for any of the, of the and use the, the, the built-in minus equals, because this is something I want to be able to override. I would like to make a new real math DLL. Let's say, and let's suppose um, <clears throat> uh, times. Let, let's suppose I want to do in integrals over a range, and um, instead of numbers, it's functions. Okay, uh, I can use the same thing, and uh, the way they would be initialized, would, the way that the objects would be initialized wouldn't be with uh, doubles, let's say. It would be with a, a function type, you know, a function specifier that takes a double, let's say. Like the, a, a function that takes a double and returns a double, which is a type of translation, right? Uh, So, uh, like for instance, it might be the square, square. So I might, in my test, initialize an object. Uh, right now with a predefined, um, you know, squared. Squared and with maybe with an initial value. Or maybe always with the same value. And uh, maybe the operation of addition is uh, an integral over a given range that I decide 
uh, and multiplication might not be uh, in integral of the product, but it might be like one of those convolution integrals or something like that. And, and you could do it all very seamlessly, I think, uh, using very simple uh, script, like the, the, the coding script could be simplified in, into something like this. And you might be able to do some very complicated math problems um, by uh, enhancing the complexity of the DLL and what sort of things it does behind the scenes. And then uh, perhaps you could do statistics or something in an easy way by swapping out the DLL and having it. Um, you know, instead of taking, instead of plus meaning plus, plus is uh, sum of squares. You know, is that statistic, statisticians are always interested in uh, the sums of squares of things. Anyway, lots to uh, think about, but first I want to do the complex part, and that will involve uh, an, aggreg an aggregation step. See you then.